Okay, who would like to start? Anybody? Um, yeah, I, I, th I thought we were a little slow at the start to move the ball. Um, and there was a period at the beginning of the second half where we were lost a bit of tactical discipline and conceded chances that on another night would be punished. Um, but that aside, I thought um, I really liked the way we pressed the ball quickly, won the ball back quickly. And our use of the ball was very good. You know, uh, patient at the right times, played forward um, with quality. And um, you know some of our attacking play and um, forward runs were really exciting. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm nitpicking, but I think we can get better. And I think we've got to keep doing that because um, these guys have got the potential to to play at an even higher level than they did tonight, I think. Well, I saw what I've seen all week from him, so it didn't surprise me the level he hit. Um, he's in a really confident moment, not only on the field, but off the field. He's so mature and... Um, um, comfortable in himself and um, you know I think I talked about that earlier in the week really how, how I've seen that um, so delighted for him to get the re reaction he did from the crowd here because we can't hide from the fact that he's had difficult moments with England um, and he's turned that full circle and I also think the goals in Spain were an important moment for him you could see the release that that had brought um, and um, you know his finishes uh, there and tonight were finishes that he he was just taking on without thinking too much and at times um, he's he's you could have almost see the thought process in the past but he's hungry for those goals I know he's spoken about that before of of how he's added that um, incentive to his game and um, yeah he's, he's I thought he was devastating tonight. Okay, Darren Luce. Darren, would you mind using the mic? Available. Okay. Cheers. Um, Gareth, it was a very poignant message on his shirt. I'm, I don't know if you know the message behind it, someone who passed away. Would it be a shame if he were punished according to the UEFA rules on the basis of that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I wasn't really aware of what the message was. Um, but um, And I don't really know what the ruling is either. So... <coughs> um, yeah, difficult for me to, to comment without knowing that. Sure. Uh, and just as far as he is concerned, do you think now that he's taken on that role of assuming responsibility that, that you know... Yeah, I mean, we, we've... Um, I, I put him into the leadership group now that we have. Um, I think he is showing those signs. I think he's a role model for the younger players coming in. Um, he's... He's really focused on his training and his preparation. Um, and um, I think he's enjoyed that extra responsibility as well and um, that that shone through on the pitch. So, um, yeah, a, a really special night for him. I, I just hope he gets the deflection. I don't know what the ruling on that will be. But, um, um, but uh, yeah, really, really pleased for him. Dave Kidd. Sorry, Dave, needs to use the mic if that's OK. The benefit of the broadcasters. Thanks. Uh, Gareth, what did you make of Declan Rice? Were you tempted to bring him on earlier when Dyer went off? Um, and how good generally is it to bring, you know, debutants into an environment like this mm. one as compared to what it has been in the past? Yeah, I think um, we felt, having started the game the way we did, that um, Barkley was a better option at that moment in the game. A um, bit more of a an attacking player and I think we were not moving the ball through midfield as, as well as we wanted to so um, we felt that was the decision there then 60 minutes was in our mind for Delhi he hasn't had a lot of football so and I thought we'd lost a bit of shape um, and a bit of tactical discipline in midfield so um, it was 2-0 two, two when we were going to make that change, but the third goal meant he could enjoy it and breathe a little bit more when he went in. So it was a perfect game for him to come into, really, at that point. Uh, and similarly with Callum, you know, I think um, um, he had an opportunity then to go and play with the freedom that he's shown all week. And um, I thought he displayed that, you know, he, again, he'll be another player that 
maybe a lot of people at home watching won't have seen so much of and um, I'm sure they'd have seen things that excited them. So. Gareth, if, um, considering that you might not call up anyone for Eric Dyer's replacement, is Rice ready to start in Montenegro? Yeah, I think um, we've got some good options to, uh, to play players in different positions. Um, so our, our intention at the moment is to go with the squad we've got. Um, but we, we need to just check on the rest of the players uh, over the next day or so just to make sure that um, there's no other issues. Sorry, Sam, I need you to use the mic. Come across. Well, the question was, what was the injury? Is that, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> save the... Um, so it, it just a uh, bit of a problem around the hip area. Um, so, yeah, he's not going to be right for Monday. Best that he gets back to the club now. Gareth, you've got a short turnaround with the Montenegro game. Firstly, what are you expecting from them? And, and secondly, are you going to have to rotate the starting lineup given the turnaround? Yeah, I think we've got to find a balance of, um, of freshness and continuity. So um, that's, that's been in our mind most of the week. Um, we need to have a look at their game from tonight just to, to finalise what, what we expect. But we know we've been there twice before and, and not managed to beat them. So... Um, it will be a, an intense environment, completely different sort of challenge to tonight and a good one for us because we've got to be able to adapt to these different situations and um, make sure that we can show our quality in, uh, in different environments, really. Gareth, you've obviously seen Jaden Sancho at this level before, but it was a big occasion starting a first competitive game for the other two debutants as well. How impressed have you been with their maturity so far? Yeah, I think they're, um, the rest of the players make it um, an environment where they can come in and be themselves. They don't feel inhibited um, around the camp and so they don't feel inhibited on the pitch and you could see that by the way they, they played. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought Jaden, really good contribution for the, for the first goal. Um, a bit of a mixture outside of that, um, but that's wing players, you know, we're, we're asking them to try things, we're asking our attacking players to take players on and um, as a coach you have to accept that um, they'll fail a number of times but then the times they succeed will we'll create chances and will create goals. So, um, yeah, to, to finish with two young wingers as we did I think was, um, was really exciting and again was only what we'd seen during training this week. You, you, your whole tenure has been marked by bold decisions, even going back to the sort of Rooney and Joe Hart decisions. When you are thinking about blooding players like Hudson Odoi and, and Sancho, mm. how much sort of, I don't know, how much deliberation is there? Like, how, how, how much thought are you putting into that before mm. you make that call to actually commit, commit to an, a competitive international game? Yeah, I think a lot of that is done. Um, you know, we're, you know, I include Steve in this, we watch high number of games. Um, so we're very clear on the capabilities of all of the players. And um, that's critical because we need to know how they're going to react in different situations, in different positions. Um, then we're thinking about what's right for them individually, um, what's right for the balance of the, of the team. So although we wouldn't have hesitated to start any of them tonight. You still need experienced leadership on the field to, to give those youngsters a chance to flourish. Um, and you've got to dip them in at the right times and make sure that you don't overexpose them too quickly. Um, keep, um, keep that level of expectation um, at one that can help their development as well because with a group of players, not just those that are with us now, but some that have had to withdraw and some that are in the under 21s and below that should be England internationals for a long period um, and we've got to make sure we've, we're responsible with their development but balance that against the fact that we believe in them and we think they can go in and play and um, if we can give them experience now then, then they'll only mature more quickly at international level. Okay, we'll finish you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.